Welcome to the Danatronics instructional video series. Today's gauge is the Danatronics Echo FD portable ultrasonic flaw detector. The Echo FD has a fast 60 Hz update rate, two independent measurement gates, five unique display modes, a 13 hour battery, and is manufactured in the USA. The FD is capable of performing most everyday flaw detection needs like weld inspection and corrosion scanning to name a few. It comes standard with software features such as AWS D1.1, DAC, B-Scan, Phase Change Detection with Alarm, and also has a 2 gigabyte expandable to 32 gigabyte micro SD data logger. It can also store 2700 unique transducer and application setups. For today's exercise we're going to be doing a shear wave calibration. We'll be using an IIW type 2 block. We're going to plug in our transducer here. You'll notice the USB connector, which is also our charging point here. And we have our B scan or RS-232 here. We're going to be using a fingertip 45 degree shear wave transducer. So let's turn on the gauge from the F1 power button. In the splash screen, as you can see, the Danatronics information plus the version of software. It'll open up some of the different setups that we already have. The default setups have squares beside them. The user setups that have been stored, as you notice, don't have the squares. So I'm going to highlight my angle beam 5 megahertz 45 degree and hit OK. As you can see now we have our trig functions here at the top. We have our menu on the side, our two measurement gates, and then our F buttons correspond to the boxes below. As mentioned in the intro, we have display mode setups, five unique. Here we have a much larger A scan, still with your trig functions at the top. A complete full A scan with the single sound path that can be adjusted to either be distance, depth, or sound path. We also have our parameters that show all of the setups for the gauge. And then back to our first display mode. I'm going to use display mode number two. It has a little bit larger readout at the top. I couple on my block. And on this particular setup, I'm going to be using a type two, as I mentioned with my echoes coming up at 2 inches and 4 inches. I have too much gain. I can use Auto 80 under F2 and it will automatically put those echoes at 80% full screen height. Try and peek up on both of them. There we go. So that's what the screen will look like. Let's look at our menu format. We press the menu button and as you can see here, here's all of our menu settings. We have our calibration at the top, data logger, the display itself, initial settings, measurement functions, setups, and then of course test. So let's go up and let's enter the calibration. 
And if you see, you just do what it basically instructs you do on the bottom of the screen. I've got those signals pretty well peaked up. I couple to the thin. I press the zero button. And I enter in the known thickness, which is two inches. Then press the cal button, the F1 button. Now I slide my gate one over. Done. I now press the velocity button. Take this up to four inches. And then OK. It calculates the sound velocity. And we're now calibrated. I can move my gate around to encompass both echoes. Lower my gate start. Hit the right arrow. Increase my gate width. And now we can see measurements in both. There's your two inches and your four inches. Now that we've calibrated, let's go ahead and store that calibration in the gauge under Setups. Zoom in a little bit. I press OK. Slide down to Setups. Hit Enter. If you'll notice, the setup that I was just using has a small asterisk beside it. That means that I have changed that setup, so I highlight it. And if you'll notice at the bottom, I can either save or discard that setup. I'm going to save it, so I press F2. Now I can either clear that name completely, or I can adjust however I want. I like this description. I'm just going to add Cal to it. C. A and L. When I'm finished, I press F4 done. It states that it is saving the setup. And all of the information, now as you see, it is a stored setup. Angle beam, 5 megahertz, 45 degree, Cal. So now I can Hit OK, and it pulls that back up. I check my block to make sure we're calibrated. There's my 4 inches. There's my 2 inches. Peek up on that signal. There we go. So now I can go and do my test. I've zoomed in a little bit so that you can see some of the other features of the operation of the gauge. You'll notice our menus are located here. To access those, we can press the left or right arrow key, and it highlights a corresponding key, and it gives you with the function buttons at the bottom uh, what you're able to do. So with the gain key, I can raise or lower the gain, and you'll see those numbers changing. Of course, you've seen Auto 80 that I showed before. And it shows many of the other features listed also. If I press F4 next, it takes me to the next list of parameter setups. This is for Gate 1. Do you see Gate 1 start with level? Hit it again, Gate 2. 
some of our other features listed here, your angle, the thickness of my block, the velocity. DAT curve is off and then back to the gain settings. Some of the other features you can see, if you notice above gain, we have zoom, we have freeze, and we can also look at the ID. If you notice at the top, this is the file that I'm using. It's linear flaw detector on the SD card. My next ID is 0016. I keep coming. Now it gives me the information for my sound path. If I wanted a different reading in the sound path or in this main thickness box, I can change that with the left or up or down arrow key. It's off, sound path, depth to reflector, surface distance, reflector leg, minimum depth. So it gives me many functions to use and there's gate 2 echo to echo off and then again gate 1 sound path so you have many features and those are also accompanied in your other two trig functions the last thing I'll show you is as you can see for gate 1 and 2 we are looking at the peak of those signals. As you notice the peak with the arrow at the top of the peak, unfortunately it's not as focused, but uh, if we were doing edge it would show those arrows at the side of those peaks. If you have any other questions on the Danatronics Echo FD, you can contact us at danatronics.com at our website or you can email us at sales at danatronics.com.